Service in most cars these days often includes a brake fluid change, usually every two years, or even every year. On this car, a Skoda Fabia Mark 1 1.9 PD engine, fully disc braked, changes are recommended every two years. If you feel your brakes are a bit soft, spongy or weak, then changing out of fluid is probably the first course of action you should undertake. And if you do it yourself, you can inspect the condition that the system is in, so you can be sure just what you take out, how much and what you put back in. The most common type of brake fluid recommended for the majority of cars is DOT4 or DOT4 which is compatible with but performs better than DOT3 which has a lower boiling point. Both these are glycol based fluids that absorb water meaning they are hygroscopic enabling corrosion inhibitors needed to keep the inside of the system free of debris that could impede or jam the system. Water ingress into the fluid is why you have to change out the fluid relatively often, especially if you live in a damp environment. Water enters the system from the atmosphere through the vent cap, seals and microabsorption through the flexible rubber pipes, accumulating over time and slowly compromising the fluid's boiling point. High fluid temperature causes any water to form vapour pockets which reduce the overall compressive force or effective load performance at the braking surface. Basically, heat vaporises the water in the fluid and your foot goes to the floor. Most notable just when you are negotiating a tight corner halfway down a long hill. So it's imperative that you bleed out the system regularly and change it out periodically. Do not use either DOT2 or DOT5 as both are incompatible with glycol, the former being mineral oil and the latter being silicon based and is hydrophobic meaning it repels water and is the opposite of hygroscopic. DOT5.1 though, don't get confused, is glycol based and is used primarily for performance use in racing where continued high braking temperatures occur. When all said and done, I would recommend DOT4. Or if you need to do, DOT4+, plus, which has an increased lower temperature viscosity, meaning it doesn't thicken up when it gets cold, and is particularly useful in ABS, ESP braking systems, traction controls and the like, as it works quicker through these systems' small channels and valves. Everyone seems to get hung up on the order that you bleed the lines out, believing it's absolutely imperative that you follow the exact order to the letter or your brakes will fall off. They won't. The main thing here is to remove all the air. As long as you've achieved this, then mission accomplished. The best way to achieve this on this car is to bleed the farthest wheel away from the master cylinder first, working towards the nearest. Your brakes will then work as prescribed, as long as everything else is in tip-top shape, that is. But from my understanding, you have to take into account the ABS unit, as lines run through this first. So what you originally thought was the farthest away, may now not be. The VAG maintenance schedule that I have gives the sequence as rear right, rear left, front right, front left which seems to fit with my right hand drive vehicle with ABS on the left. So that's my take on it. If you have a different opinion, put it in the comment section below and maybe we'll start a discussion about it. There are a number of methods to bleed a car's brakes and I'm going to show you two methods that I use. First put your gloves on and eyewear and be mindful that brake fluid can affect the paintwork if it stays on too long. Have some clean new brake fluid ready. Locate the master cylinder. You might need a torch. I'm just going to take this pipe from the intercooler off first to show you guys because it's a little bit hidden underneath this and it's not actually necessary to do that as you can just about get to it. Check the level. It should be between these two arrows but it's better to be at the higher level just to be on the safe side. You can of course just to check the level by taking the top off. That's okay on mine. The first method needs two people, so Billy No Mates is out of luck here. 
use somebody that's either done it before or somebody that can carry out instructions explicitly to the letter. Starting with the rear, I've jacked my car up a little bit just to give a little bit easier access to the lead nipple. You want a short length of transparent pipe, approximately 8mm diameter, 5mm internal diameter and a bottle of some kind. The most often used container is a ready-made jam jar that's cleaned out with a hole in the top. The only downside is it's made of glass which you could break it. But there are more professional bottles such as this one. Put something down to lay on. I've got my anti gertis old rug. Then go underneath the car and locate the bleeding nipple. I've got disc brakes on mine. Yours may be drum brakes and they'll be slightly different. You need to take the little rubber cap off. My bleed nipples are all in good condition, but if yours are all rusted, you might have to put some penetrating fluid on them first. Then you'll need a suitable spanner. Don't use an open spanner. Use either a ring spanner, which you can slip over the pipe, or a semi-open special brake bleeding spanner like this one which are very good because you can just put it on with the pipe in place slip the pipe over the end of the nipple securely if you find it hard to put it on then just put the end of the pipe in some hot water first my bleed nipples are 11 millimeter some can be 10 Use appropriate protective gloves and eyewear. Locate your spanner securely on the nipple but don't turn it yet. Get your mate to sit in the car ready. I'm using this gorgeous fashion model in my case. Then go underneath and securely put your spanner on the bleed nipple. If you've got a ring spanner thread it along the pipe and then give clear instructions to your mate. Pump it three times and hold. Keep the pressure on. When the foot's in the bottom position, re-tighten the blade nipple. Slowly release. Then it's just a question of repeating the process until you're happy. Pump and hold. Which means you see clear fluid without any air bubbles. Keep the pressure on. Slowly release. As you're doing this you've got to periodically check the level in the reservoir. Keep topping it up with fresh fluid. And be mindful that it has to settle because there's a filter on it. So you have to keep waiting for it to settle. And of course you'll have to repeat this process on each remaining brake line. You can use this method to change out the whole brake fluid in the whole system, but it is quite tedious. But first I'd recommend you take out all the fluid in the reservoir prior to doing that. You can do this with a turkey baster. Take as much fluid as you can out of the reservoir. before refilling with fresh fluid. A much better method of changing out the whole fluid is to use a one-man pressured system. I've used this little pressured system for many years without any problems. This one's a, a Gunton Easy Bleed. It comes as a, a plastic bottle that you fill up with new fluid. As I said, this is uh, DOT4. Um, a little bit short here, so I think I'll have to go and buy some new and fill it up properly. But I'll just show you how to fit it and attach it first. The kit does come with different sized tops to fit different reservoir caps. So you should be able to find the one that will suit yours. So you just take the original cap off and fit this end onto the reservoir. Mm. 
make sure they're all nice and tight and fit the other end onto a spare tyre or you can use your real tyre if you want you just have to make sure it's less than 20 psi which just safeguards you blowing any seals or anything within the system but in practice I've used a bit more pressure than this and had no problems at all on this car once you've got it all attached it's just a question of going around each corner of the vehicle and opening each bleed nipple valve in turn letting an appropriate amount of fluid out. I usually estimate the amount that's in the pipe. Sometimes you can wait to see new fluid come through if it's in really bad condition. Don't worry about wasting new fluid. The main thing is you've got to be sure that you've replaced all the fluid. So you might want to top the bottle up a little bit just to make sure of that. A good estimate would be 500 millilitres to a litre for a complete fluid change. When you're happy there's enough fluid come through and there's no air in the pipe, retighten the bleed nipple, but don't over tighten it. The front ones you can still do with the wheels on, you just need to turn the wheel to the outside. There's just enough room to get in there. And don't forget to put the rubber caps back on. Release the air pressure. And if you're using a road wheel, then you need to pump it back up again. And refit the cap. Once the pressure's released, you can take the cap off the master cylinder. But you'll find that the fluid is right up at the top, so you'll need to take some of it out to bring it back to the top level. Replace the cap and tighten home securely. Then wipe around for spilt fluid, especially on the bodywork, as it can damage the paint eventually. And there we have it, job done. And don't forget to test the brakes thoroughly, first in situ and then on a little short run. Check the level in the master cylinder again and any leaks underneath. Do have a look at the condition of all the pipes under the bodywork and to the, each of the wheels and examine the flexible pipes for cracking and consider replacing anything that looks a little bit dodgy. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and consider subscribing. And I hope to see you on the next video. Oh, and there are some other pressure bleeding one-man systems available, such as this bottle with a built-in gauge and pump, which I'm hoping to do a review on at some stage. Mm -hmm.